What's going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's video, I want to show you eight tips for Final Cut Pro 10, whether you're a beginner or if you're already advanced. If you're like me and need quality assets for any type of project, visit Envato Elements, which is today's sponsor. Get unlimited access to over 55 million resources such as fonts, photos, video templates, and more. They offer a simple license and your licenses still count after your subscription has ended. Click the link in the description to save 50% off any annual subscription so you can get access to everything for less than 20 bucks and any assets I will be using in today's tutorial. If you select the clip and go over to the view over here and you go down to media playback, you should have this by default optimized or original. So what that means is it's playing back in its original quality. So in this case, this clip is in 4K, but I have a 1080p timeline. So if I go over to, say I start adding a bunch of effects. So I'm just gonna go over and add some basic, um, just color correction. So I'm gonna go to like color wheels. I'm gonna change the globals here, maybe make it like this, maybe increase the shadows and maybe go over to distortion, maybe do something like this. So I'm just gonna start adding a bunch of effects here. So now there's a lot of stuff going and if I push play, you're gonna see it's starting to be really choppy, right? I mean, it's skipping almost 30 frames. If you wanna play that back so it's smooth, change the media playback from optimized to proxy only. Now when you do that, you're gonna see that you get a red message or a red error. Uh, it'll say missing proxy. So what this means is you have to convert this clip from a original video or original media to a proxy. You can do that by right clicking on the clip. You can also do this on multiple clips if you have them, kind of like this, and then right clicking and going to transcode. I only want this on one clip, so I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go over to transcode media. I just leave it at default, codec ProRes, and then the frame size is 50%. And I'm gonna click on OK. Now this does take a little bit because it does have to render. Now you're gonna notice though, if you go back and I push play, it's playing back so much smoother as you can see. And you can layer on a bunch of effects. So say you want to add an effect to this clip here and you don't want to you know, add them all again to another clip or multiple clips, what you can do is first add an effect. Cool, so say we like this effect here and we want to copy all of those effects, but I don't want to add them all over again. Select the clip with the effect you want to copy, press Command C, go to the next clip that you want to add the same effect to, hold down Shift Command V all together, it should bring up the paste attributes window where then you can select the uh, all of the effects from that clip. Now, the cool thing is if you click on paste, it will just copy everything from that clip. Now, if I press command Z and I do it again, so shift command V, uh, and I go over here, you're gonna see there's certain boxes that you can check and uncheck. So say you want to have the effects only but not the transform, you can have this unchecked. So just uncheck it and now only the boxes that are checked will transfer over. And I click paste. Now you're gonna notice it only copies the highlights onto this clip. We all know the uh, shortcut to copy and paste clips, just, you know, Command C and Command V. But if you do that, you're gonna notice that it pastes it wherever the playhead is at and it cuts in between that clip. So if I say I select this one, I press Command C and I press Command V, it pastes it right here and it cuts that clip in half and it's just a nightmare. So another easier way to do that is just by holding option and just dragging up and it doesn't split the clip and you can click and drag and move the clip anywhere in the timeline. And you can do that multiple times. Just hold option and you can make a, a bunch of copies and it places the clips above each other. Say you wanna find where this clip here is in your computer or on your laptop or a Mac. All you gotta do is go over to the project window. So what you wanna do is right click on the video that you wanna find uh, on your computer. And then you're gonna go over to reveal in finder. The shortcut is uh, shift command R. Click on the reveal in finder. You're gonna notice it opens up the finder window and it'll show you original media, which is where it's stored. And if I push play, this is where the clip is in this folder. So say you wanted to track her eye or something, go to the transform tool, add a keyframe, but before you do that, you gotta scale this up. So we're gonna scale this video up. 
We're gonna drag it and right now I don't know where the center is on this window. So this is where the horizon line uh, comes in handy. So if you click on the down arrow next to view and you go down to under overlays, show horizon, click on this, it will bring up vertical and horizontal lines. Now I can place her right eye on this center grid here and actually know how much to scale without leaving a gap. This works great for this exact uh, situation. So if I drag this here, you can see now it's on her eye, but you're gonna notice that this anchor point is not in the middle. So we have to fix that. Just go over to the inspector tab, go over to the video, and then under transform, you're gonna notice the anchor. So in order to move this over here, go over to the anchor and drag the X and drag that so the uh, this is aligned to her eye. So just make those adjustments. And once it's right on her eye like that, then you can click and drag and move this back into the center. So now when we add a keyframe and we skip a couple of frames like shift right, now we can just move this like that. And it kind of jumps for some reason. It's just Final Cut being weird. So now if I go back and I turn off the horizon lines, just go back to view, click show horizon to get rid of it or turn it off. Now, if I push play, you have the locked on effect. Of course, it's not gonna be perfect. I mean, we skipped some frames, but that's really, really cool. It's a, one way of using the horizon line so it tracks her eye exactly in the middle of this frame. All you gotta do is go in the timeline, move the playhead to where you want to save that particular frame. So say I wanna save this image or frame at this place in time. All you gotta do is leave it where it's at and go over to the top, go to file, go down to share. And right now we don't have the option, so I'm gonna show you how to add it. Click add destination. And this will open up a new destinations window. Next to add destination, you're gonna go over to the save current frame. Just click and drag that anywhere between this. I like to drag it at the bottom. And then from there, click on it and change the settings if you want it saved as a TIFF file. I'm gonna go with JPEG and right now scale image to preserve aspect ratio is checked and then close the window, then go to file, share, and then now you should have this option of saving the current frame. And then here you can change what it says. So we're just gonna do like thumbnail. We're gonna save it on our desktop, click save. And then you're gonna see here, I have it saved as a thumbnail.jpg and there you go, you have this saved as an image. Uh, if you guys don't know, when you add keyframes, it actually saves it in the video, right? So say we wanted to fade this video in under compositing next to opacity, it's at 100%. So we're gonna start it at zero, add a keyframe, go a couple frames, and then just drag this to 100. Now you're gonna notice that it fades in. Now, if you wanted to adjust this without having to mess around with the keyframing, right clicking on the video and going to show video animation, the shortcut is uh, control V. Then you're gonna notice you have different sections. So you have transform, crop, distort, and compositing. So right now we have compositing because we added that. So next to the, or underneath compositing, you're gonna see two keyframes here. So if I zoom in, you're gonna see there's two different ones and this is 16 frames long. If you wanted to make that longer, you can actually click these keyframes individually and drag them out to make them longer and it will make it so that it creates a smoother fade. If you drag it in where it's closer to each other, it will go by a lot quicker. But the ability to actually move them and visually see them is so much easier than doing it over here. You're gonna see that you can add multiple keyframes and you can also select uh, multiple uh, keyframes by holding shift. So you'd have to move the outer ones first. So you just do something like that. And then you can move individual ones like that or do all of these so holding shift and then moving all of those points like that. So if you don't know, this button here in the inspector window is not often used. And honestly, you should be using this because it saves you so much time if you uh, are in a hurry and you need to save a clip, but you wanna like brighten it up or something. Uh, what you gotta do is first select a clip that you want to add the effects to or any changes, really anything you do in this window, uh, you can save. So say we want to brighten up the image. So we're gonna go over to the uh, color board here. We're gonna add a color board. For this one to work, you have to select one of these or this button will not show up. We're gonna go to exposure. I think we're gonna 
maybe brighten it up a little bit and maybe in the sh in the midtones and color we can uh, maybe adjust it add some blues in there and then the highlights i think the highlights are perfect this is what it would look like so this is with the effects off and then with our adjustments enabled now if you wanted to save this and you have a clip that's similar in terms of lighting click save effects preset and this will open up a new window telling you, you can create a custom effect choose a category select effects and click save depending where you actually save this so we're going to give this a name and i'm going to name this i'm going to name this woman for now category we can choose the category that we want so or you can create a new category which is kind of cool so you can actually add this in the effects browser here next to the category uh, i want to do color presets that would make sense attributes you can you know turn on or off certain you know attributes or effects that you don't want or you do want and keyframes here is if there's any keyframes enabled uh, in this case we don't have any but if you added keyframes it will pop up next to the attribute that you enabled it on click save now if we add another clip in the timeline so we add this one here and then drag it next to this one and we want to copy the same adjustments that we did to this clip but on this one we just want to go into the effects go over to color presets and then go down to woman and you're going to see now we have this new preset which is really cool click and drag this on the clip and it saves all of those settings here as you can see and it also changes the position so before and after if you access or use this frequently instead of going and finding it or trying to find it through here or through the search all you're going to do is right click on it and click make default video effect so now when you go to the color presets, it will be at the very top. If you guys enjoyed this video, please, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and turning on the bell notification so you don't miss out on this video. And I do want to give a big special thanks to Envato Elements again for sponsoring today's video.